are carbs good for us? Yesterday when I was doing my shopping, I got given a, a leaflet from the, it was written by the French Health Ministry and the National Programme for Health and Nutrition. Well, that's what it said on the back anyway. And this leaflet was promoting carbs in all their different forms, whether it's bread, pasta or rice. This leaflet was telling us to eat more of them and stating that the French population don't eat enough carbohydrates. Now this came as quite a surprise to me because judging by the amount of the number of French bakeries that you see around you and the amount of bread that French people seem to get through, I wouldn't have thought that anyone would be lacking in carbohydrates. And I was also surprised because I thought that food science had moved on from the classic food triangle or food pyramid, which um, I don't know if anyone's seen one recently, but it used to have the carbohydrates on the bottom and then fruit and vegetables on the next section up, meat on the next section, and then fats right at the top, meaning that we should be consuming mainly carbohydrates and very little fat. But I thought that fat was no longer supposed to be our mortal enemy. I thought that scientists um, were now saying that sugar is actually worse for us than fat. So anyway, I continued reading this leaflet. And then I saw that it was also recommending that we should eat three dairy products per day. Now alarm bells really started ringing here because we know that this is outdated and we know that dairy products aren't as good for us as our parents and grandparents used to tell us. We, we know that a lot of the pressure to consume dairy products came from the dairy lobbies and that actually, although we do need calcium, we don't necessarily need it in the form of dairy because this raises the acidity levels in our bodies and actually leads to brittle bones, which is the opposite of what we were told it would do. So anyway, I read this leaflet and then I thought, well, let's do a little bit of research to establish the facts. You might have heard that carbohydrates can be divided into simple carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are found in honey, sugar, chocolate, biscuits, and um, a lot of processed food that gives us a quick energy kick. Complex carbohydrates are supposedly good for us, and these are found in grain products such as bread, pasta, potatoes, vegetables, um, lentils, etc. And, um, and, and these, these types of carbohydrates are supposedly better for us because rather than just being one small molecule, they're a set of molecules attached together with the, with a sort of, in a sort of chain formation. So scientists, well, some still do think and some thought that these were better for us because your body has to break down the, the chains in order to metabolise the glucose molecule. It's supposed to be especially beneficial for us to eat uh, complex carbohydrates in conjunction with fibre because then the fibre makes it take even longer to digest and then the glucose is released much more slowly into the bloodstream. However, complex carbohydrates such as white bread, so the famous baguette unfortunately, uh, pasta and rice, etc, all of these have the fibre removed. But scientists still say that they're good for us because they're complex carbohydrates. However, this theory was actually debunked as early as 1981. In 1981, two researchers from the University of Toronto tried to make a list of foods that are safe for diabetics to eat. They tested all sorts of foods, from those which are traditionally thought to be good for us to those which we know are bad for us. And during their research, they came upon the idea of giving white bread to the volunteers. As this was supposed to be a complex carbohydrate, and therefore something that's supposedly safe to eat. To their surprise, when they gave white bread to the volunteers, they saw that their blood sugar shot up immediately, as much as it did when they administered pure glucose to the volunteers. So based on this research, we could say that bread, although it's defined as a complex carbohydrate, is actually not a slow sugar because it's absorbed, the um, glucose from it is absorbed immediately into our body. And the same applies to white rice and pasta. And this gives us the well-known sugar rush. 
So, in fact, based on this research, we shouldn't be talking about simple or complex carbohydrates anymore, seeing as they're both absorbed immediately into our bodies. We should instead be talking about the glycemic index, which is how much a food raises our blood sugar. Now, as I was reading further on in the leaflet, another claim that I thought was quite preposterous was that carbs don't make you fat. In fact, it was written in this leaflet that it's not the carbs, it's probably the fatty sauce that you're eating with them. However, this flies in the face of basic science. As you probably know, carb carbohydrates can't be stored in large quantities in our bodies. So any excess that we can't burn off in the moment is converted to glycogen. Glycogen is a sort of temporary energy store uh, which, is, which is found in our liver and muscles, but it can't be stored forever. So when uh, too much glyco glycogen is available in our bodies, it's converted into fat. Another um, bit of evidence for, uh, for carbs making us fat is that when the um, traditional food triangle that I was talking about was released in the United States, in 1980. Well, before this triangle was released, people used to eat quite a lot of fat. People used to eat butter, for example, full fat yogurt. And it was around the 1980s that the fat free trend really kicked in and that we were told you shouldn't eat fat because eating fat makes you fat. But if we look at obesity levels before 1980 and now, we can see that they've risen, at least in the USA, by at least 20%. So this would point to the fact that actually avoiding fat probably isn't the best method for staying slim. You might wonder why this is. Well, according to research, um, Americans are now consuming at least 530 more calories per day than they, than they were in 1970. And you might, you might wonder why, because fats actually contain more calories than carbohydrates. However, when we eat a meal that's high in carbohydrates, what happens is that we have a sugar crash afterwards, or to give it its scientific name, reactive hypoglycemia. What happens is you eat a heavy meal, lots of carbohydrates, and four hours later you feel hungry again. This is because when you eat a meal that's high in carbs, um, huge amounts of uh, glucose are released into your into your body so you get a spike in blood glucose and then your body reacts to this by producing a huge amount of insulin so you get an insulin spike and then because there's so much insulin the glucose is metabolized very rapidly it's either used immediately or stored as glycogen and then when all of this has been either used up or stored you feel hungry again after about four hours so what do you do you feel hungry you eat more carbs because you've been told they're really good for you, it gets converted into glycogen, and the cycle repeats itself, and then you get fat. And this is what has been happening to, um, in, in many developed countries where we've been told to cut down on the fat and to eat more carbs. All of this, um, all of this science and the fact that leaflets are still being produced that tell us what seems to fly in the face of common sense it does make me wonder if lobbies are involved somewhere, like in the dairy industry when we were told we should be eating three dairy products per day. Coming back to the idea of the glycemic index, a few years ago, a CEO of a large agri-food agri multinational said, if we ever have to show the glycemic index of products on the label, then more than half of the carb-heavy products that are currently on the market will disappear. And this is obviously because it will show us, the, the glycemic index labelling would show us just how bad they are for us so people wouldn't buy them anymore. So it makes you wonder why this glycemic index labelling has not been adopted, if it can really show us what our food's doing to us. In fact, the uh, National Programme for Health and Nutrition, which, um, which published the leaflet in question, is, has been quite heavily against glycemic index labelling. And this is why I wonder if lobbies have uh, come into play here at some point. There are many serial-based products 
produce and in fact probably many more than we need and then the agri-food industry needs to sell these off and of course the lobbies don't want the large corporations to lose money so they have to tell us that they're good for it. We know that the power of lobbies is huge on an, a European level and a national level. In fact, if you, if you look at Emmanuel Macron's party for the European elections, ALDE, it's actually funded by Bayer Monsanto. And I'm sure that they're not doing this just for the good of their health. We can't forget as well Nicolas Hulot's comments when, uh, when he resigned on the huge power of lobbies in the French government. So what should we do in the, in the face of all this conflicting information then? Well, personally, I think we should ignore the government because you can never tell whether you're being told something that's actually good for your health or if the lobbies are rubbing their hands and making huge amounts of money. We know that before farming was invented, humans survived and prospered for seven million years without eating cereal-based products and uh, eating very few carbs because we lived a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, eating fresh fruit and vegetables, meat. And so for almost all of our seven, um, for almost all of our existence on Earth, we were eating a very different type of diet. I would say we just need to apply a bit of common sense and choose the carbohydrates that we eat carefully. Choose those, for example, which provide vitamins, minerals and fibre, as well as a quick energy boost. For example, sweet potatoes, lentils and pulses, root vegetables and fruit, and avoid processed foods wherever possible. Unfortunately, this also includes baguettes. And finally, I would say the age-old adage, everything in moderation 